Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode it's another scale model sports fan spectacular with the Blood Bowl team of the Necromantic Horrors. In this episode I'm looking at the Wolfenberg Crypt Steelers, the Necromantic Horror team. And I think if you'd put this in front of me in the late 80s, early 90s, if you'd shown this to me, I would have lost my mind completely. But let's see if it still has the same effect on me now as I get this unboxed and built. Back soon. So interesting to see how the branding has changed. As I zoom out there, you can see they've, they've retained, I think, that the main logo looks the same to me. Game of Fantasy Football. Hmm. The uh, font on that has changed a bit. Definitely the, the way they show the number of the miniatures has changed. They've still got a piece of artwork over here on the left hand side. The Blood Bowl logo has got the new sort of red, white and blue coloring. And it's just a kind of a, a stylized, almost like the, the French tricolor, the, the flag. The way they've striped it across here. And on the back there you can see that it has the same information but just in a slightly different layout. But let's see what we've got inside the box here. Ah, this one comes with a transfer sheet. So the one from yesterday, the, the Crud Creek Nose Pickers, it didn't come with a transfer sheet, but it's good to see it back in this one. And, ah, that reroll marker is brilliant. These, these folks look fantastic. Good to see werewolves in there too. Not sure how useful a pumpkin helmet is, but I'm not going to argue with the guy. Somebody's drying their socks on the line there. <laughs> the wraith is tied up in or part of, I don't know. And then that flesh golem there too. So let's get into this. Ah, nice. Little uh, football there on the tab. Very cool. Got the decals. 32 millimeter bases. Oh, wow. <laughs> The bats, the sort of, I guess, Jack Skellington from Nightmare Before Christmas kind of face. All of the positionals, the numbers. Then we have the instruction manual here in black and white. And as you can see, they're designated by sort of a number and then a letter, 1A, 1B. And as long as you follow those sort of rules, you will have uh, 14 different characters, I believe. And then all of the positionals, cost, skills and traits everything else you need to know to play as them. And then a brilliant piece of art to wrap it up. And straight away I just spotted the werewolf heads there. That's great stuff. Lots of component parts. Uh, the socks on the line there. The different balls there at the bottom. Which are very cool. Oh, this one is great looking. Actually the whole thing looks great. Even at this stage the amount of detail in here is pretty sensational. The stitching across the golem's back. That's very cool. Ah, oh, wow, the marker is really something special. Love the crew on top. What's it look like at the back? Yeah, nicely detailed too. This guy's face, very cool. Okay, uh, I'll be back soon with these all fully built up. So here they are, the Necromantic Horror Blood Bowl team. And they are cracking looking minis. They're right up my alley as well. I, I love horror. I love classic horror. I love these, the zombies and golems and all these things. So yeah, at the design stage, these are phenomenal. Really, really beautiful miniatures. But it's after the design part where we run into a few problems with these minis that just make the build process probably not as fun as it could be. And certainly a few of the decisions that were made when they were slicing them to put them onto the sprue. You know, maybe that has ended up creating a mini that is a little bit awkward to build and this might be opening it up to a little bit of frustration when you're when you're putting these together. I'll give you an example here just of the zombie lineman one. You can see that rather than just having a a complete spinal cord here with the you know maybe even that doesn't need to be uh, included but they could certainly have a complete spine and then have the head attached to the top of the spine instead they split the spine in the middle you've got to attach it into this part and it just makes it kind of wobbly so just a little bit frustrating and fragile and i don't really understand why they made that decision but they eventually did go together and they do look great so let's look first at the ghoul runner and uh, here he is i'm loving this armor on the arm there arm armor it's nice just a plank of wood maybe a bit of a barrel or something like a beer barrel that has been repurposed 
You can see how everything is just kind of lashed onto the body. The exposed spine at the back, which is really graphic. Some maybe muscle tone on the back of a lung there or something. Pretty grim stuff, but really cool. Here's Zombie Lineman 1. And that was actually the one that had that sort of split in the uh, spine. And what's great about these is that's not actually a spine. It's a piece of wood. The arms are pieces of wood. I think the legs are actual flesh. But you've got straw sticking out all over the place. This is just a reanimated scarecrow type of thing. And it is absolutely awesome. Some necromancer has been cobbling this stuff together. It's like, why go buy players when you can just make them from scratch? And here's another one. I don't think the, what was it called? Oogie Boogie? Was that the character in Nightmare Before Christmas? And that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this hat or head or whatever this is. And that doesn't really work for me. So I might actually pop that head off and get a replacement on there. Because I do like the pose. I like the... I like the wood and everything that's been used to construct this one. Uh, this one kind of looks like an American football player. So it's very unusual in Blood Bowl. But this one actually looks like he's kitted out to play football. Got some pads there. He's actually got a jersey. A proper helmet with the, uh, like these, the metal face mask and everything. Like, this looks like the real deal. I'm not sure about the army boots he's wearing to stomp across the field, but... I love it. I love that this is almost feels like a football player. The next one less. So we still got the pads and everything. I give a little bit more lean to this one. That there is a little bit of flexibility there. So I had him leaning in even more than the first variant. But the variant head has no helmet. He does have a piece of armor, looks like nailed to his head and kind of Mohican thing. And then we move on to the wraiths. And at first they, they look like nothing, but I like that you can see the hand underneath the spectral sheet here, the semblance of a head and shoulders. It's got a really cool presence to it. It looks looks great, actually. I love the inventive way that it's been attached to the base with what looks like a tethered clothes line with the socks hanging off it. Very much like the Night Haunt miniatures from uh, Age of Sigmar where they come up with more and more inventive ways of tethering it to the base to make it feel like it is a ethereal floating creature, but also to tie it to reality of making it fit onto a, a base itself. And the, the variant has just got the, instead of the open grabbing hand, it's just got the spiked hand there poking through the, the blanket or sheet or whatever that is. And then just onto the werewolves here. Beautiful detail, beautiful sense of motion. These went together really, really quickly. I love the amount of detail in the knuckles and you can see sort of the tendons and everything. It goes into this fur and the great little shoulder pads there. With the spikes on them. Apart from the whole werewolfy thing, he's actually pretty well uh, kitted out for a game of Blood Bowl. This one I was last thrilled about because it has kind of a uh, helmety, muzzly looking thing. I wasn't such a major fan of that. Then we're into the third and final zombie lineman. And I love this pose. I love the bit of the boot hanging off there as he's worn his way through the soles. You can still see a bit of that wooden construct, the straw sticking out. As you're building these, you can really see how the necromancer duct taped and pinned them all together. And the second one, full disclosure, actually lost this front piece. I found it again about a day later. But at the time I was thinking, when I looked at it, I thought, I can actually leave that off. If I leave that off, I can actually see the construction of this. You can see that piece of wood that forms the spine, the way the uh, rib cage is connected to it, the way the head is sort of just shoved onto the wooden spike, I guess. And then how the rest of it is constructed. It gave a little window into this necromancer's work. And again, it has that great helmet and shoulder pads. And then finally, we have the two flesh golems. And it really felt like these should have been on bigger bases because they are chunks of creatures. You see that the way the wood is holding together the leg here or giving it some kind of armor. But no, I think that's holding together the leg. And again, on this forearm here... The head on this one 
It's okay. It's got an exposed brain there, I think. Which is quirky and cool. But perhaps not the most practical thing when you're running around on a football field. I love the stitching across the back. It just looks so grim. I think these look great. They're so chunky as well. And then finally, the variant build. So this is just called the alternate head. And I do prefer this one with the armor plate or helmet. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's just a metal plate that's being bolted to the skull. The drool coming out the mouth, the broken nose. Great detail around the face. Great detail all over these ones. I just love that. So yeah, um, complexity of the build and the slight frustration of the build swept to one side. These end up being great miniatures. The Wraith is probably the least impressive of them. I was surprised at how much I really enjoy the look of the zombie linemen. They're full of character. The werewolves are okay. Nothing really to get too excited about. I think the flesh golems are massively interesting and uh, beautifully sculpted. Even though the head with the exposed brain isn't my favorite. It's cool, don't get me wrong, but I prefer the guy with the uh, bolted on metal lid. Yeah, my favorites are definitely the zombie lineman. Especially the one with the proper American football helmet and shoulder pads. Great stuff. So that wraps it up for the necromantic horrors. We had the snotlings yesterday. And tomorrow is the third and final day of this Blood Bowl special weekend. And finally I get the chance to unbox second season of Blood Bowl. Have a good look at the referees and black orcs. Human nobility and what else is in there? There's like trolls and ogres and all sorts of stuff. But that's all coming up tomorrow. If you're enjoying the content, please like, share and subscribe. And until the next one, please take care. Bye bye.